I'm attempting to beat a Pokemon Infinite Fusion Hardcore Nuzlocke. Normal Nuzlocke rules apply, such as if a Pokemon faints, it dies, and I can only catch one Pokemon in each route. I've also added some new rules specifically for Infinite Fusion. I'll be playing on Hard Modern Mode and only catch unfused Pokemon. The rest of the rules are listed here and in the description as well. Attempts 1 through 11 were done over half a year ago, and they ended pretty poorly, so I needed a break. I returned on attempt 12, and that didn't go too well either. We lost our starter to a random Bide Pokemon, but we also got a Chansey Gyarados fusion. All the way up to Koga, Kyarchan was a monster and pretty much the hard carry. Unfortunately, Koga Paraflinch comboed us into oblivion. Attempts 13, 14, and 15 are even worse off. Attempt 13 we lose on account of missing a double kick on Misty's Frostrass. Thanks, Snowcloak. Attempt 14 doesn't get that far either. I spam Mud Slap on Brock because that's all I have, but somehow he breaks through. In attempt 15, by the time I got to Erica again, I was too mentally exhausted. Her Volcavanette set up one quiver dance and it was over. Attempt 16 is a new day though. Just kidding, it's the same day, can't end on a loss. And this is where things really start getting good. And we start with Trico. The first notable encounters here are Shinx and Shroomish, that I fuse together and eventually name Sheesh. After we fight Chad, our fusionless rival, <laughs> I pick up the Rock Rough Egg and encounter an Eevee. Both of these guys are from Secret Garden, a secret area to the right of Route 1, and it only opens up after this specific rival fight. If you defeat Brock before fighting the rival here, you'll be locked out of the location, so it's pretty easy to miss. We can't evolve Eevee into any of the more interesting forms for a while, and he doesn't synergize well with Trico so I decided to save them for when it feels right. His name is Princess, by the way. Unknown is the Route 3 encounter. I fuse them with the Baby Rock Ruff because Levitate is something, and call her ABC Dog. At least you're kinda chill, ABC Dog. Brock, who's a Steel-type trainer in this mode, is made super easy thanks to Sheesh and his Leech Seed Mudslap combo. Take that. After the fight, I wonder trade my unmentionable fusion using the trade ticket from Brock. Hopefully this gives the team some momentum. One of my other rules is we allow one dupe each, so... A second unknown fusion is allowed. Thank God. Down the road, we get a couple evolutions. Pick up the Pokemon Center Magikarp, and capture a Swinub in Mount Moon. Team Rocket is here, and fails at a triple fusion, whatever that means. Don't worry, guys. Keep trying. Maybe you'll get there by... I don't know. Attempt 16... The rival fight against Chat in Cerulean City is super easy thanks to Sheesh the Carry, and we get a Baneri on Route 24. Normally, this is where I'd also get my Route 25 encounter. For some reason, there's no grass in Route 25. There is a new named area around Bill's house called Cerulean Cape, and according to the wiki, there is a grass encounter table here, but I can't find it. Oh well, off to Misty we go. I did some thinking for Misty, but I don't have anything crazy in the box. She's a nice type trainer, and I end up bringing the Psychic Rock ABC Dog and Electric Fighting Sheesh. The battle starts and our alphabetically inclined dog uses her priority Accelerock to KO the Amazel, but not before they set up Snow Warning and land Icy Wind. I think this is a gym thing, but ability set weather lasts the whole match. Frostrass makes their grand entrance, and unfortunately, I need Sheesh to come in for free. That means ABC Dog has to go down here. I was pretty tired at this point, and I probably could have led with Sheesh to begin with, and done more damage with Mach Punch, but Frostrass is bulky, and I need chip damage from Accelerock first. Thank you, ABC Dog. The run will live on because of you. Sheesh comes in with a cool new sprite, shout out Buselis, and we eagerly Mach Punch for victory. It doesn't kill, and Frostrass gets a net positive in health thanks to the berry and draining kiss. Oops, I should have used Spark. But there's no time like the present. Cool! On our way forward, we catch a Drifloon, fusing with Buneary to make Balloony Tunes. We catch a Pikachu, fusing with Magikarp to make Yarchu. They can hold the light ball, by the way. We fuse our starter with Swinub after all. Happy birthday, Sepruption. And finally, we wonder trade a not so great encounter to get Chachi, the Seedra Fampi. The SSN fight against Chad is no big deal. Most of his Pokemon go down pretty easily. Okay, Yarchu is not nearly as bulky as his ancestor. That's fine, I'll just switch into the Ghost Normal Balloony Tunes and... I have been withered and hardened over these last 16 attempts. I can't sugarcoat it. Balloony Tunes got cancelled by Warner Brothers to the benefit of a money laundering scheme. Luckily, Sheesh can pretty much sweep from here, but I'm not gonna lie, that death kinda sucks. I don't know if I had any real answers for the Solovy, but I didn't put much thought into it. Onto the fighting type leader, Surge. I lead with Chachi to two-shot the Hall Fisk with Bulldoze, 
Coughlin comes in, and I switch into Sheesh, who wins by just being the better Breloom fusion. Houndlaid comes in last, and I send in Gyarchu to intimidate them on a bulk up. I go for the Light Ball boosted Stab Spark, which should do some crazy damage, but they flinch us with a bite. Luckily, I could go into Chachi for a mini Slugfest, and switch back into Sheesh and intimidate again. Surge heals on the switch, so I play it safe and get another intimidate with Gyarchu, switch back to Sheesh for a fourth intimidate, I know, I'm crazy, and safely force palm to claim the deathless victory. Let's go! After this fight, we get a few evolutions, and with the multiple new locations and gifted eggs, the box is looking pretty good. Instead of fusing them all right away, I decide to fuse a Trubbish and Oricorio that I know I'll never use, I'm sorry, and want to trade them. Here we get Paco the Nido Rita? Okay, we got our first self fusion. In case you were wondering about the self fusions, they're pretty much just fancier versions of their base form. For example, two Venusaurs can fuse together, and it'll look like Mega Venusaur, but the stats, abilities, and typings are all just averages of the base forms. In Pewter City, I get a Pineco from a quest. In Route 10, we get a Yamask. In Rock Tunnel, we get a Shuckle. In Celadon City, we get our second Eevee. And in a secret area left of Celadon City, called Hidden Forest, we get an Oddish. Oddish fuses with Pineco, welcome Kumquat. But more importantly, Yamask fuses with a Happini that I got as an egg from the daycare center. Welcome Bandages. Hey, you guys better remember his name. He's a great tank and a great new member to the team. And Kumquat. Now we're headed to the Celadon Sewers, baby! This is where the Team Rocket stuff really starts in the game. And Erica's here to help! I think it's just a complicated way for her to figure out my team. She does help with the double battles, and heals my Pokemon in between them. Until she doesn't! Oh hey Giovanni! There's still no triple fusion in sight, but there is Haunch Sing. A levitating dark poison type. Yep, no weaknesses. Real quick side note, I hate Haunch Zing. This thing isn't even that great stat-wise, but the tools that it has and its typing at this point in the game make it so frustrating to deal with. Of all of the attempts that I got to this guy, I have not had one answer for him. Eventually, I switch into Bandages, who can just Shadow Ball and Soft Boil and win. Should've let with him. Kekgon with Protein comes in, and we can Willow a Spit right away. Chachi switches in to do some big damage. Let's go, Chachi! Big Don fan fan, by the way. And Giovanni gets scared and switches into his ditto. It's pretty much just a ditto. Copying Chachi is a little scary, but we win because we're better. Kekon comes back in to die, and then Giovanni sets out Smeargar. Anyways, Bandages could just burn it and stall for the rest of the fight. We're ghost normal, so a hyper beam and hex doesn't do any damage to us. And the spores and destiny bonds. They could just be waited out. Easy peasy. Wake me when you have a triple fusion, Giovanni. Hopefully in no more than 16 attempts. The bug type Erica fight is coming up next, but first I head to the secret Team Rocket shop behind the Celadon Cafe. You kinda gotta know someone to get in. Here we can pick up the already fused Bully, a Bagon Hitmonlee. Not too stoked about the Hitmonlee part, but Salamance? I then head over to another secret location and catch a Duskull, specifically to fuse with the Shuckle from earlier. Shuckleberry Finn is soon fully evolved. We're pretty much going full stall for the Erica fight. Erica leads with Araldo, I lead Shuckleberry Finn. Once we Willow Wisp and Sticky Web, we can pivot into Kumquat to stall the burn. After some more pivoting and protecting, Araldo just goes down. Volkovanat comes in next, and I switch into Bandages on a Fury Dance. It doesn't do too much to us, but after some ominous wins, Erica gets scared and switches into Scolion. I'm not sure why she did that, especially after Quiver Dancing, but that's okay. I switch Kumquat in to Toxic Stall, and right before Toxic can take them out, Volkovanat comes back in on a Giga Drain. Okay. Bandage just switches in for the kill and protects when Scolion returns. Toxic should take it out here, but there's a bug feature in this game where Toxic turns reset when switching. Oh well. Bandage gets the kill, and that is Erica down. It's almost time for our revenge on Koga. I could have taken him down last time, but it just didn't work out. This time, we're gonna be ready and win in spite of the RNG. Notable encounters before the fight are the Static Snorlax on Route 12, a Murkrow from Route 15, a Curlia on Route 14, and a Riolu, Shedninja, and Vigoroth from areas 1, 2, and 3 of Safari Zone. I count each area in the Safari Zone as an encounter when I play, because they can run away. Let me know in the comments why I'm wrong. 
I fused the Vigoroth and Snorlax into AC for an incredible fusion. No Truant, they synergize well. Learn the name. This is an Apex Predator. That looks like it would rip off my face. I also learned about more gifted eggs. Most trainers in this game either ask for a rematch or give you an item when you talk to them. But a couple of them give you an egg with a completely random fusion. It could be anything, and we end up getting Jesus Bear and the Flexicutioner. Unfortunately, while I was getting encounters, I ran into a dancing themed double battle on Route 14. Every Pokemon was fused with Oracorio and had the dancer ability. So, when one of them does a dancing move, like Revelation Dance, the other one does it too. I wasn't really expecting the fight, and suddenly our starter Sepruption was tripled up on. Before he really got the chance to shine, he was gone. Sepruption didn't do too much in the boss fights, but he was really good in between them. Rest in peace, big buddy. After evolving the new team members, I make my way to Koga, and I mean business. Knowing that Koga's leading with the Dark Psychic Zoroark fusion, I'd lead AC and go for Body Slam, for damage, and the para. AC uses Slack Off while they get fully paralyzed. We then outspeed and take the kill with Body Slam. Launchfire comes out early, and since I don't know all of their moves from the last time I was here, I'm scared of a possible fighting type attack. I switch into Gyarchu to Intimidate and eat a T-Wave. Next, we eat a Drill Peck and land a nasty Brick Break. Gyarchu can easily get the two-hit KO here, but Koga sees that, so he heals once and then switches into Weirion, a levitating poison dark type. Brick Break's not doing the job here, so I switch into the Flexicutioner for their debut battle. We eat a Dark Pulse and then knock off their Black Sludge. Flex avoids a poison from Sludge Bomb and Cross Chop does some sizable damage. Shortly after, the Flexicutioner takes their first victim. Mimi turn is next, so Jesus Bear enters for another debut. We lock in Moonblast to break the skies, but they have Poison Jab. Oops. I actually knew they had that. Gyarchu is back, but gets hit by Leech Seed? I don't understand this AI, but Gyarchu could just clean up shop. Hauntfire is back, so I sent an AC. I'm, I'm psyched out from the RNG from Attempt 12. What if, what if they Thunder Wave and get us fully parried, and then kill us, and then fully para the breath, and then we just get swept? What if we miss low sweep? What, what, if, we're, what if they're hiding horn drill? AC fights through and wins us the revenge match against Koga. With six badges finally earned, our team is looking pretty good. And we can head to Saffron City. No new encounters really, but we do have a new level cap. That means Chachi, Arbali, and Scala Speed, that I stole as eggs, don't tell anyone, can fully evolve. On my way to Saffron City, however, I end up having to fight this Team Rocket grunt to get in. Luckily the fight wasn't too bad thanks to my team of winners, but there's a guard right there watching the whole thing. What do you have to say for yourself? Of course, the toll is a lie, but I'm defenseless, I couldn't do anything about it. Oh, there's nothing I can do, he says. So I take my business to the Saffron City Police Department to complain. We want to stop Team Rocket, but we can't do much about it. None of what they're doing is technically illegal, since they respect the rules of Pokemon battling. Oh my goodness, the city isn't safe for a kid like you these days. How? <laughs> they, wait, they, they took over the city! They're, they're, they're preventing people from living their homes. The train station is blocked off and no one is using it now. I head to Slifco and do my civil duty of saving a dozen hostages. And get rewarded with a Lapras. Nice! That leads to chat challenging me to a battle oddly close to the Team Rocket mob boss. Could he be playing interference because Giovanni bought him out? There was some plausible deniability in other versions of this interaction, but this feels a little too close. The battle begins with Skull Speed vs. Dubrock. If you couldn't tell by my Fire Poison Pokemon, I was not expecting a Steel Rock type lead. So Bandages comes in to Will-O-Wisp, heals with Soft Boiled, and tanks us to victory. Sharperona comes out next, but soon shares the same fate thanks to AC. Fractalgon is here, and not that scary yet. I send in Chachi to Ice Beam, but after a Dragon Dance and Dragon Claw, Ice Beam isn't cutting it anymore. Sheesh switches in to Intimidate. On the switch, Fractalgon does another Dragon Dance, but that's okay because we could just kill with Mach Punch. Reunipion Re 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 is next, and strangely scary. Luckily, we have Bandages who's immune to their Shadow Ball and Hyper Voice. Their magic guard means no Will-O-Wisp shenanigans, and when I finally land a good Shadow Ball, Reunipion gets the special defense drop on us. I could probably get the kill from here, but I'm not sure how well we can live a crit now. AC switches in on a Psychic and also gets a special defense drop. Unlucky. Well, welcome back, Bandages. 
We heal the scout, but Whimsaray ends up switching in. After an annoying amount of musical chairs, Ace is able to come in and just take out Chat's three remaining Pokemon. You go, girl. Chat, I can only assume, realized that I was the better mobster and decided to help me take down Giovanni. Yeah, tell your friends. As I recall, the number you promised were much higher. Do I need to remind you of what Team Rocket does to those who are not able to uphold their end of the bargain? The police be like, yeah, nothing's technically illegal. This battle is essentially a 12v4 in my favor, so even though they lead with Age of Magius and Haunch Sing, AC takes the first two kills pretty quickly. Everything was looking pretty good, but Giovanni then sends out his level 52 Donzor and level 57 Kekon? Well, this feels a little silly. Garchan intimidates, Chachi kills Donzor with Earthquake while Kekon avoids it with Air Balloons, Garchan intimidates again, and Jesus Bear eventually claims the victory for us. Not doing anything illegal, huh? Well, at least the director we saved gives us a Cyndaquil. <sighs> what an exhausting <laughs> sequence of events. Luckily, Pokemon Infinite Fusion lets you take a little vacation to Johto as a little treat. This game has all of Johto in the Sevi Islands, and a little bit of Johto is available to us right now because Team Rocket isn't blocking the train system. Who would have thought? A notable encounter in Johto is our new Magmar who we fuse with the Murkrow from Route 15. The only reason I do this is because Sabrina is a Fairy-type gym leader, and I know a Fire-Flying-type will come in handy. Welcome Don Don. I also fused the Safari Zone Riolu and gifted Lapras. Hello, Lapdog. Our Cyndaquil Curly Fusion makes Paratita. She won't be used a whole lot, but she looks so cool. And finally, thanks to the Goldenrod Department Store, we can buy every Evolutionary Stone. Princess finally evolves into a Sylveon, and then we fuse him with the Celadon Gift Eevee. From here, he evolves into the phenomenal Sylveon Leafeon fusion. The 572 BST goes crazy. Since we only have a few routes of Johto to explore, there's not much else to do but head back to Sabrina. For this fight, I'm leading with Paco and bringing Don Don, AC, and Bandages. You know, before I knew it, AC and Bandages became pretty solid mainstays to the team. Sabrina leads with a super luck Togetails and fires off a flamethrower. No burn. It's a big day for me. Paco hits back with a drill run that does over half. We die to a crit or a burn from another flamethrower, but once they use Aura Sphere, that Togetails is gone. The ground fairy type Marrow comes in next, and this is the whole reason why I have Don Don. He's immune to ground type attacks and resistant to fairy. Okay, not that resistant. We clear Smog to break the Disguise, but they don't have... Okay, well, Don Don is the fastest on the team, so I want to preserve him just in case. Bandit just switches in on a play rough. Eats it way better than Don Don. Okay. Our bulk gives us the opportunity to land a Will-O-Wisp, which probably saved the game for me. If it didn't land, Bandit just would have been in a healing loop until we got crit, and no one wants to switch in on an attack. Well, luckily, the Will-O-Wisp landed, so we could just stall and take the Mericu out. Sylvoir switches in, but Bandages is such a monster, Will-O-Wisps protects and Shadow Balls take another kill, even after they set up Calm Mind. Lastly, Sabrina has Cleflix. Just like the others, we land a Will-O-Wisp right away. Cleflix has some classic toxic stall moves like Cosmic Power, Wish, and Seismic Toss. However, Sabrina didn't account that we could use the power of friendship. Everyone switches in and out to stall, eventually letting Don Don come in and take the kill with Flamethrower. You know, I'd be a little embarrassed if I was a psychic and I lost a Pokemon battle. Just saying. With Sabrina out of the way and Surf becoming usable, I head to Viridian River, another secret area south of the secret hidden forest. In this area, overworld starters randomly spawn in. However, if you're a real good cookie and have been doing side quests like I have, you'll get good karma. Once your karma is high enough, there's a chance a level 30 Mew will spawn in. We just have to fish for the Mew sound effect to play, and claim our encounter. It's pretty easy, actually. This little guy's name is Steve. I can't imagine a name more fitting. Right after, I get the guaranteed event Jirachi from encountering over 777 unique Pokémon, a Zubat from a new route north of Bill's house, a secret Gumi Egg from Route 15, a static Mimikyu from Spooky House, and a static Absol from Cinnabar Island. I fuse the Gumi and Mimikyu to make Goku, and the Jirachi and Absol into the really cool Starry Night. Man, you mean if I did a randomizer, I'd see sprites like this all the time? Huh. 
After doing a hide and seek quest for Blaine, I head over to challenge him and his psychic type Pokemon. I lead with our new Steel Dark Starry Knight, and Blaine leads with a Nightmare. <laughs> it tries to set up with Shift Gear, but we just unleash Night Slash after Night Slash. Goodbye, Mr. Clang. Or should I say, good night. The psychic fighting Zazakin comes out, so I switch into bandages on a sky uppercut. I don't know if you heard, but bandages is kind of that guy. So we just shadow ball and get the kill. Third up is probably Blaine's scariest Pokemon, but only in gameplay. Octator here is a psychic water type and has booty. If I'm not quick or, or lucky, this thing has the potential to sweep any team. I go for a Will-O-Wisp to put it on a timer. Tick-tock, Octator. Really lucky for me, Moody lowers their special defense stat first. I go for the kill, but after they stall with protect and don't get any good boosts, Blaine Heart switches into Galchomp? Okay. Another Shadow Ball takes them out, but I don't want to take that much more damage. Princess the Monster debuts and switches in on an Earthquake. He then tanks a Leaf Blade before landing a Moon Blast. A Psycho Cut lands on us, luckily not critting. We eat our berry and get the kill with Giga Drain. Octator is back out, and we outspeed and just get a clean kill. Let's go, princess! It's great to finally have you on the team. Now that we have 7 badges, it's time for a boss fight unique to Pokemon Infinite Fusion. Normally, we would just go to Viridian City and take down Giovanni once and for all. But now it's time to head to Mount Ember on Sevi Islands. Allegedly, they're close to making a 3-way fusion. Pff, yeah, right, like that's even possible. Well, congrats Giovanni, looks like attempt 16 is the one! So this boss fight is probably the hardest in the game, purely because of how much is stacked against you. The fight plays out as a 3v1, and the birds act as if they're unfused. <laughs> looks like your triple fusion is incomplete! In the previous attempts earlier last year, I've already made it to Zap Malkuno. So I've got a strategy to almost guarantee an easy victory. Perish Song. Our Parish Song user has always been Lapdog. I decided to fuse the Lapras with Riolu all the way back then, because I needed a Steel Water type to make sure Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Flamethrower, and Air Slash weren't super effective at all. The scariest part of this fight is turn 1. I have to live enough hits, or hope that one of the three birds does a setup move so Lapdog can activate Parish Song. But we just outspeed! That's perfect for us because right after they use Safeguard, Safeguard would have nullified Parish Song and our whole strategy, so... Lucky. Lapdog gets paralyzed, but we just power through and detect to stall a turn. From here, I switch into Bandages. If anyone can tank three hits from this thing, it's him. But it doesn't even matter, because one of them uses Reflect. Bandages can then just protect to stall the last turn of Parish Song, and goodbye Giovanni. I hate to see you go, but I love to watch you. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's time to clean up and get the remaining encounters. There aren't many left, but I can still purchase a Pokemon from the game corner. This counts as a named location, so I finally go for the Scyther. A Scizor Shedinja Fusion? With Wonder Guard? I was waiting to see if I could find something better, but this might really be one of the best... Oh, I hit A too fast and got an Abra. Alright, well, all is not lost. I can still get the Zapdos now that it's been freed from Team Rock. Okay, the door was locked and I was looking for a button. Okay, uh, let's just fuse Steve with uh, Zubat, a fast psychic flying type that can learn any move? Sure. So, the 8th gym is a weird one. It's normal type, and I know pretty well how good the normal type fusions can be, but they're just normal types, come on! I end up bringing Gyarchu, the Flexicutioner, AC, Starry Knight, and Princess. I was gonna bring Brandages, but we can only bring the same number of Pokemon that the Gym Leader has. I haven't mentioned it until now because it wasn't really relevant, but because of that rule, Bandages sits out, and I soon regret that. Gyarchu leads the fight into Giovanni's Ditson, who just transforms into the Garchu right away. 
Our Intimidate is the only one that activates, so Gyarchu could just stay in to do bigger damage. After Giovanni heals twice, I take the opportunity to Volt Switch to get momentum. But he heals a third time. Very cool. Well, Princess resists everything they have, so he just gets the kill with a Moon Blast and Draining Kiss. Kofa King comes out next, so I switch in the Flexicutioner to tank. Then I switch into AC to show him a better slacking fusion. AC uses Sucker Punch for some super effective damage, and they go for Hammer Arm? Another Sucker Punch would do it, but I switch Princess back in to eat the resistant Hammer Arm for momentum. Too bad they use Retaliate. Very cool. Drainicus gets another kill. Snorking is next. This is either normal ground or normal poison, and I do not want to risk the four times poison damage. Yarchu takes the field again, and they fail in Earth Power. Huh, they didn't use a poison move. Time to do some damage with Brick Break. We, we did nothing to them! Well, we know it's a normal ground type at least, since it was super effective. I'm confident they don't have poison moves now, so Princess switches in on a Thrash? Well, our, our berry recovers most of the damage, so that's fine. Giga Drain does some great damage too, but after getting to full health, the next Thrash crits? <laughs> okay, probably the worst time for a crit, honestly, because now Giga Drain won't heal anything. Regardless, Princess gets the third kill on Giovanni. Now his penultimate Pokemon is Mapom. This thing is probably faster than Princess, but almost certainly doesn't have any moves that are super effective. Don't think about Aerial Ace. I decide that my best move is to keep Princess in, live a hit, and heal back big health from Draining Kiss. Princess, no! The crit mattered! Uh, they blindsided me! You were here from the beginning, cheering us on from the sidelines, and you finally got to play. Uh, you didn't participate for long, but you left your mark. So it turns out Mapom has buffed attack thanks to Life Orb and Technician. Without bringing Bandages, who's immune to normal and fighting, I didn't really have a safe switch in for it. Oh, I still don't. After thinking long and hard about how to get out of this, I realize that my team is too slow and damaged to get out of the fight deathless. I mean, we might not get out of this fight, period. Unfortunately, my best bet is to switch and guard you, set off an Intimidate, and let him go down to get a free switch in. AC and Starry Knight are weak to fighting, while Flex is a little too slow to take a hit. Karchu was such a good Pokemon in this run. He wasn't always in the spotlight, but he put in a lot of work in getting us to where we are now. If we're lucky, the Mapam will do another double hit and miss, but there's nothing we could do but send him in and hope for the best. And they go for Karate Chop. Rest in peace, you beautiful beast. Man, I wish I brought bandages. Well, now it's all up to the Flexicutioner, who's gotta live up to their name, or else the run is over. Our fighting type moves are Cross Chop and Low Sweep. Yeah, no Brick Break. I was feeling a little fancy. Cross Chop has a 1 in 5 chance to miss, and I'm not risking that. So putting it all on the line, I select Low Sweep, and... Mapam uses Dual Chop. Low Sweep lands and gets a clean KO. Good job, Flex, but also good job, Gyarchu. Flex wouldn't have been able to live that hit without your Intimidate. Lastly, Giovanni reveals Tyrancy, and this could have anything. Brick Break, Earthquake, Seismic Toss. Nothing feels completely safe on the switch in, but Flex must have put fear into Giovanni's heart because for some reason, they just use Screech. Flex lands one last low sweep and that's the final gym badge. It was a bloody one. We lost some good friends, but we made it to the other side. Goodbye, Giovanni. I hate to see you go, but... We have one last major gatekeeper before the Pokemon League, and that's Chat. Well, he can't be that much worse than Giova- Oh, is he only level 56? Chat's fight wasn't easy, but after setting up webs with Shuckleberry Finn, our Dragon Fairy Goku and Fire Fairy Baratita will safely get the win. I think this might be an oversight for hard mode. Hard mode raises the difficulty of the AI and boss Pokemon trainers, but regular trainers remain on their normal mode levels. I'm assuming this doesn't count as a boss fight for some reason? Oh well. After dodging a bunch of trainers, and getting caught by others, our journey has finally brought us to the Indigo Plateau. Each of the Elite Four is insane in this build. I'll be dealing with things like permanent weather, legendary fusions, and more. If I want to win, I'm gonna need to bring it. Of the remaining Pokemon, I decided that my best and most balanced team is Shuckleberry Finn, Steve, Bandages, Starry Knight, AC, and finally, 
Goku. The moment of truth. If I lose here, I don't think I'll have the heart to restart. This is it. Can I beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Infinite Fusion? Let's find out. First up is the water type specialist, Lorelei. I lead with Shuckleberry Finn to set up sticky webs, and she leads with Polyleon Pol Poly uh, to set up Drizzle. I use Protect expecting a water move, but they end up going for Flash Cannon instead. This tells me nothing one-shots us. So next turn I go for sticky webs, and they land a crit Flash Cannon. It's a good thing it wasn't a crit Hydro Pump. <laughs> If Shuckleberry Finn died immediately, the run might have ended too. We're kind of really relying on these sticky webs. Bandit just switches in on a weak flash cannon. From here, he just unleashes an onslaught of Shadow Balls. Almost every one lowers Polyleon's special defense. Aiming to preserve bandages and his moves, Goku comes in on nothing because Hydro Pump misses. He gets a kill with Thunderbolt after the Polyleon breaks disguise. Garakku comes in next, so we use Will-O-Wisp. AC switches in to reset Goku's disguise, and Gyarku quickly goes down. Scartop switches in to use the rain-boosted waterfall. That did a little more to AC than I would have liked, so Starry Knight tags in. Oop, it did even more to him. I don't want to give them any more free damage, so we stay in to crit them with our own Night Slash. I'm pretty sure we need the crit to get the kill, so Bandages returns to the fight, soft boils, and kills with Shadow Ball. Kingstar is next and predicts our Protect by using Shell Smash. Oh boy! Rockslide hurts a little bit, but as long as they don't flinch us, we could just heal off the damage and two-shot them with Shadow Ball. Okay, bandages. The big bad Milotina comes out, and we need to Toxus, this tanky beast. They reverse the first one back to us thanks to Magicote, but we just go for it again, and it lands. Goku then switches in to use Play Rough. It does nice damage, but Milotina just recovers. Good thing we got the Toxic going. Eventually, they do one last Magicote in a panic and go down to a Shadow Sneak. Then Toxic. Last up is Pukutum, so Goku uses Will-O-Wisp, and I just pivot over and over again until the burn takes it out. One Elite Four, down. Well, that was a good warm-up. I played a little sloppily, but that's fine. The fight against Bruno should be a little more manageable, I think. He's a Rock-type trainer, by the way. Bruno leads Tyrant Flame, and I lead Shuckleberry Finn. They set up Sandstorm with Sandstream, and then set up Stealth Rock while we use Sticky Web. The rocks are going to be pretty annoying. We land our Will-O-Wisp after getting rock slided, so we decide to stall the burn damage and heal with Leftovers Protect. They use U-Turn on a Protect, so I decided to Will-O-Wisp again, expecting a switch. Instead, this time they use Crunch. Eventually our defense is lowered, so instead of risking Shuckleberry, AC joins the fight. Unfortunately, Bruno takes the chance to use a full restore. They U-Turn into Arms Orb, but we just take the kill with Earthquake, thanks to the Sticky Webs letting us out speed. Meropyrior comes out next, and this thing has crazy physical stats. AC uses Earthquake, and it looks like it does a little over half health. Meropyrior retaliates with Stone Edge that almost kills with Sandstorm damage. We have a little bit of wiggle room with Leftovers, so I go for another Earthquake. Unfortunately, Bruno sees our kill too, and uses a full restore. This time when we use Earthquake, we bring them into yellow, but the attack looks like a lower roll. And I have seen enemies live on one health before. I cannot risk AC, so Goku comes in. Unfortunately, they use Bone Meringue, which breaks our disguise with the first hit and almost takes us out with the second. Wow. Okay, bandages it is. He comes in on a Stone Edge, which never seems to miss by the way, and we protect a stall Stone Edge PP. From here, I don't believe Shadow Ball kills, so bandages uses Soft Boiled. They could just use Stone Edge and land a crit, but we don't really have any other option. Which makes it even better when they miss! My plan was to just heal and protect until they ran out of moves, but now I can take advantage of this opportunity and land a Will-O-Wisp. Wow. <laughs> Mayor Pyrrha can't do anything now, but watch as we take him down. King Rong tags in, but two goes down to the burn damage and Shadow Ball. Tyrant Flame is back, and so are our Willows. Shortly after, they U-turn into Cradluff. This thing looks like it has Toxic, so I switch into Starry Knight on a U-turn. Hello, Aerodon. I just got to see that they are definitely using Earthquake. Steve can pivot, but the Stealth Rock runs down a quarter of our health. Bandages switches in on an Eruption, which we take pretty well. Then we barely live in Earthquake and heal to a comfortable spot. I think Bandages might be our hard carry. <laughs> Shortly after, another will o -Wisp lands, and with some meticulous stalling and pivoting... ...on both sides, Bruno's Tyrant Flame and Aerodon eventually go down. Kratlov is last, and Starry Knight makes easy work of them. Okay, team! Way to hang in there! We might need to do some Yoka after this, or something. 
Agatha is our third fight, and she specializes in poison types. Acid Rain isn't a real weather option, so I can only assume she's going to set up toxic spikes. I have Starry Knight and Steve who are immune, but I'm going to give AC a Lumberry to deal with it. I'm mainly relying on her for this fight. Good luck, girl. Agatha leads with Clinkfish, and I lead with, you guessed it, Shuckleberry Finn. The webs are almost a necessity to help AC later on. As we set them up, Clinkfish sets up their first layer of toxic spikes. With the webs, I immediately switch into AC, who negates the toxic right away. They set up regular spikes on the switch and then a second layer of spikes before we could land an Earthquake, but even after a Focus Ash saves them, they still lose to Earthquake. From here, there's a bunch of annoying Pokémon, including another levitating Poison Dark type. But surprisingly, AC could just sweep the Crow Dragon Hounsing and Clef Raid with Earthquake and Thunder Punch. Muo reveals itself, but after setting up some cheeky minimizes, they just switch into Arnx? AC was burned and running out of moves, but Agatha could have just cheesed the rest of the fight. Oh well, I send in Steve to comfortably get the kill with her own Earthquake, and then when Muo comes back, we use Psychic to get some great damage. They use Sacred Fire, missing the burn, and then finally, Steve takes the kill with a second Psychic. This is exactly what Steve is for. He has the tools to deal with anything and can outspeed most fusions. I think. She's mostly here to sweep and hang in the back pocket. Well that fight was exactly what I needed after the first two. This Elite Four run has already been going for 80 minutes at this point, and the hardest fights have yet to come. But we've gotten this far without any death. I wasn't counting on that, but I'm really glad that's the case. Good job team. Now let's take down Lance. The battle starts, and he leads Togaflame. Well, I lead Chuckleberry Finn again. You might be wondering, Nick, Lance is a flying type guy specialist. Why are you trying to set up sticky webs? They won't work. And you're right, I forgot. While the Togaflame hits me with Moonblast, I miss a Will-O-Wisp. Chuckleberry protects, then goes for another Willow. Unfortunately, Togaflame flinches us with Air Slash before we get it off. That's fine, we could just protect again to get... Oh, it failed. Because our most recent move was protect, and the flinch doesn't count the move or something? <laughs> oh well. Bandages comes in and starts going for Ice Beams. But first, gets flinched. By Moonblast. Togaflame U-turns into Dark Knight and... Oh, oh, we get a freeze! Lance uses a floor restorer, but... That felt pretty nice. Either way, Bandages goes on their own Rampage, taking down Dark Knight, Septactyl, and Volkajiot. The Steel Flying Agements comes in, and it complicates things a little, but adding Will-O-Wisp to the Ice Beam Barrage makes sure they go down. Togaflame quickly follows after we use our last Ice Beam. Lance's last Pokémon is Snorkor, who can be pretty annoying with their Toxic Orb Poison Heal combo, but we land another Will-O-Wisp before switching into Goku. Then, Goku just goes for his own Ice Beam. Oh, he's stealing moves, huh, Goku? Wow, Lance actually ended up being the easiest fight. I don't think we would have been able to do that without Bandages' help, but <laughs> a win is a win is a win. It all comes down to this. Me versus chat. He's the only thing standing between us and victory. I quickly think back to all of the great Pokemon that have helped us get to this point. It's time to claim the throne. Not only for us, but for them. No matter what happens here, we're calling it. So let's get it done. The final battle begins. He leads with Ninsharp, and I lead with all reliable Shuckleberry Finn. I considered leading with Steve to threaten flamethrowers, but I wanted to get Sticky Webs up above all else. Chad had different plans though, and decided to do big damage and flinch with Iron Head. After some protect stalling, I switch into Starry Knight, who tanks their hits pretty well. We get a crit with Night Slash, but they heal with Full Restore and Baton Pass to switch into Torturneon, the first real triple fusion in the game being a fire, water, and grass type. Hmm, looks like chat was colluding with Giovanni after all. We did get another crit on the switch, but it does nothing. I was hoping to have Steve already in for this matchup to use Fly, but the only safe switch in now is Goku. He even resists all their moves, and I definitely planned for that. Tortorion repeatedly uses close combat, so even after some floor restores, Goku takes them down easily. Chandelval comes in, and for the rest of the fight, I assume that this Pokemon is Fire Ice, and make my decisions around that. It is in fact Ghost Ice. Starlight pivots in on a Blizzard that crits, 
We protect, and then Banja just switches in to a Fire Blast miss. I almost use Will-O-Wisp, but go for the damage with Ice Beam. I continue to stall and pivot with Bandages Protect and Goku's Disguise until Goku gets burned by Fire Blast. Through Disguise. Did not know that could happen. Now's probably an okay time to go to AC. I'm so worried about a burn because a burn can ruin the whole game for me. Let's go to AC here. <laughs> well, I wasn't thinking about it, but Shadow Battle's only attacking moves observed were Fire Blast and Blizzard and they were definitely out of each. I also knew they were going for the Will-O-Wisp thanks to the Protect, and could have played around that. But right now, our hardest hitter has her attack cut in half. Ninsharp switches back in while taking a couple of Earthquakes, but one Iron Head and Burn Tick means we are not safe to stay in. I kind of put myself into a corner by letting AC get burned, and unfortunately, that means I need a safe switch in in order to reclaim the battle. Shuckleberry Finn is really the only option right now, and it feels really bad having to sacrifice her, but that that's the only option. We were so close to the end with no deaths, and we definitely wouldn't have been here without her. Thank you, Shuckleberry Finn. I'd love to send in Steve here, but she doesn't outspeed anymore, and any large chunk of damage on her could lose us the run. If she comes in, she needs to sweep. So Bandages comes in to tank and lands our own Will-O-Wisp. That comboing with Protect and Leftovers is a nasty combo, if you hadn't noticed. Chat decides to Baton Pass one last time into Haxmans. They barely live from the first Ice Beam while setting up Dragon Dance, then we barely live from the Outrage. Well, now that they go down to a second Ice Beam, easy peasy. <laughs> Shandalvile comes back in on a Protect to let me know that they're just going for Will-O-Wisps. We'll take the burn damage as long as we can guarantee Soft Boiled. I capitalize on the opportunity and switch into AC who can eat a will herself and heal. By the way, while this is happening, chat switched Ninyard back in just to die from the burn damage, then switches Channel Vial back in. I don't know why. While AC heals, the demons Reunivion switches in. Well, this thing is way too strong and it even out damages what we heal thanks to the burn. I'm really regretting that. With Reunivion being Psychic Fairy, we don't really have anything that can hit him for super effective damage. This is a really tough choice, but I realize I have to let AC go down here. She won't really be doing much for the rest of the fight, thanks to the burn, and no one else could ever dream of switching into an attack from Reunivion before dying. AC looks at me, perhaps with some regret herself, but accepts what she has to do for the team. Ever since she joined us on our journey, she's been a mainstay. Probably the most consistent fighter alongside bandages. But I guess it's as the saying goes, those who shine the brightest often burn the fastest. AC spends her last moments fighting, unleashing one final earthquake upon Reunivion, and goes down to a hyper voice. Rest in peace, girl. We'll never forget you. It's not over yet, however. It's almost time to unleash Steve, but from what I could tell from AC's Earthquake, Reunivion is an offensive and defensive beast. We need more chip damage, and the duty falls on Starry Knight. His base 120 attack and Super Luck Night Slash lands, but doesn't even bring them to the yellow. Once again, Hyper Voice takes another teammate. Good job, Starry Knight. You're probably one of the coolest fusions in the game. This won't be for nothing. Now, Steve can finally come in, and we land a super effective Poison Jab. It does about 30% and lands a Poison for good measure. They hit us with a resisted Psychic, for some reason, and we can finally get the kill with a second Poison Jab. And now that the big bat is down, the even bigger batter can come out. Intimidating Luxius. I knew this would be coming, and we do have Earthquake, but Steve is at a huge disadvantage right now. I need bandages to come in, stall, maybe even burn, but... Nothing is free in this cruel, cruel world. Once again, we need a sacrifice. And Goku is the only option left. With the help of Disguise and our surprisingly decent natural bulk, Goku stalls a couple of turns, but eventually goes down to the burn. You weren't here for long, but you were incredibly important to the team. Rest well, little guy. Bandages joins the fight again and misses Will-O-Wisp. It doesn't matter too much since Luxius is taking tick damage, thanks to their life orb. Luckily, I soft-boiled here for the sake of stalling, 
because they reveal Stone Edge and land a crit. Well, good job, Living Bandages. After a couple non-critting Stone Edges and Soft Boilds to undo the damage, we're sitting all right right now. Only two Soft Boilds remain, and... Well, we functionally just wasted one of our two remaining heals. <laughs> That's okay, as long as it doesn't happen a second time. Okay, well, they go for a weaker Thunderbolt, die from recoil like we planned, but now the burn damage is going to rack up. Chindleval, who is somewhat responsible for all of the deaths in this fight, comes in last. They have no more blizzards, no more fire blasts, and we're immune to their fake out and will-o-wisp. Bandages still has many ice beams to unleash, but the final fight has become a stall match. It all comes down to the wire, but Bandages barely survives the last stick of burn and gets the kill on Chandelile, getting us the victory against the Elite Four champion and the game. Steve was still in the back to always get the kill if Bandages went down, but I'm so glad he was able to live and even get the win for us. It took a lot to get to this point, but we did it. Thank you Shuckleberry Finn, Steve, Goku, AC, Starry Knight, and Bandages. This game does have a post-game involving Johto and the rest of Sevi Islands, but I'm just gonna take this win while I still have it. Maybe I'll continue it another day. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, comment, and subscribe. Who was your favorite Pokemon? Was there someone else who I should have brought to the Elite Four? I streamed this entire playthrough on Twitch, so if you enjoyed that content, or if you want to nickname some Pokemon throughout the journey, that's the place to be. I also have a highlights channel where I try to edit down all of my streams, and right now you can find my entire journey of Pokemon Infinite Fusion there, as well as some other things like my first time playing Dark Souls 3 and Lethal Company. Well, that's about all I got for today. Thank you all for watching, and have a good one.